when one surface moves relative to another, there's typically going to be friction. When you have contact between the surfaces and motion, there's going to be friction. And there's three types of friction. The first is what we call static friction. And this occurs when there's no movement between the two surfaces. So here's an example. If you take a large object that's not going to move when you push it, say for example your refrigerator here and you're leaning against it. So you're just standing there like this leaning against the refrigerator. Well if you're leaning against the refrigerator you're exerting a force on it. You're pushing it necessarily. If you're leaning on it you have to be exerting a force on it. So the question comes up if there's a force to the right why doesn't the refrigerator move to the right? And the, exam the, the reason is because the force you're pushing with is not big enough to overcome the force of friction down here between the refrigerator and the floor. So if you want to draw both forces you would have the force that you're pushing with and then equal and opposite to that you'd have the force of friction which we'll call a little f and uh, now of course it's possible to push your refrigerator hard enough to move it if you made if you made this force big enough you could overcome the friction and get the refrigerator to move and people do that every day they move refrigerators around but just in a situation like this where you're just leaning there you wouldn't expect the refrigerator to move and when there's no movement between the surfaces that's that force of friction down there is static friction. If you push it hard enough to make it move, that's what we call kinetic friction. So kinetic friction involves movement between the surfaces. One surface is sliding relative to the other. So with kinetic friction, there's movement between the surfaces. So if you have the example we had earlier, if you had an object moving along at some velocity v, and notice that's just a, an arrow representing how fast it's moving. That's not a force. In this case, it's just skidding to a halt. The force of friction is what makes it stop. So that, And in that case, it's kinetic friction. Now one thing to note is that static friction is typically larger than kinetic friction. So if you're going to push this refrigerator, you have to push with a force large enough to overcome the static friction. And it's hard to get it moving. It's, it's kind of like it's gripped the floor there, sitting still and gripped the floor. But once you get it moving, it's the kinetic friction that you have to overcome to keep it moving. And the kinetic friction is usually a little bit less than the static friction. So in other words, it's usually harder to get something started moving than it is to keep it moving. That's because the static friction is typically larger. When any two surfaces come into contact, the static friction between those two surfaces will almost always be larger than the kinetic friction, the friction if the surfaces are actually moving. And then the third type of friction that we encounter is what we call rolling friction. Okay, and rolling friction is exactly what you would expect. If you have um, some surface and an object rolling on the surface, say a ball or a wheel is rolling along the surface, well imperfections in the, the wheel or the surface, it's not perfectly smooth, causes it to bump, bump up and down, and rolling friction will eventually cause it to come to a stop. But rolling friction is typically very low. In other words, something will roll, obviously, a lot farther than it will just slide to a stop.